हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द गो प्रोग्रामिंग लेक्चर सीरीज दिस इज़ अ शॉर्ट इंट्रोडक्टरी लेक्चर कवरिंग गो फीचर्स लेट अस हैव अ क्विक लुक एट फ्यू ऑफ देम गो इज अ स्टैटिकली टाइप्ड एंड कंपाइल्ड लैंग्वेज लाइक सी दैट इज वेरिएबल हैज टू बी टाइप्ड अप्रोप्रिएटली डिपेंडिंग ऑन द वैल्यू इट कैन स्टोर इलस्ट्रेटेड बाई एन एग्जाम्पल हियर अ वेरिएबल ऑफ टाइप इंटीजर टू स्टोर एन इंटीजर वैल्यू लाइक योर एज एंड ऑफ टाइप स्ट्रिंग टू स्टोर स्ट्रिंग और कैरेक्टर्स लाइक योर नेम and if you choose to do otherwise your code will throw an error just like in an example presented on the right hand side we have assigned float value to an integer variable integer to a string and string to a float and that simply won't work in interpreted languages such as python during the execution an interpreter actually reads the source code converts it into machine code and runs it go code cannot be run that way source code has to be compiled first to generate an executable file which when executed runs the program go provides automatic memory management it has a garbage collector that keeps track of the heap memory usage garbage collector periodically checks for the unreferenced variables and releases the allocated memory if it detects it is no longer going to be used let us see how it works with an example note that it simplified for the sake of illustration ignoring the actual involved complexities During the program execution a memory is allocated for a variable on heap this variable actually the allocated memory is used in different parts of your code once part of your code is done using the variable garbage collector identifies that the variable allocated memory is no longer being referenced or required then it destroys the variable releasing the memory used by it which is added back to the heap thus you don't have to worry about memory allocations and the allocations go has an inbuilt support for concurrency like multitasking that is handling several things at once concurrency in go is achieved using go routines go routines are nothing but kind of green threads that allows you to run parts of your code concurrently let's say at some point of your program you spawn go routines then they'll continue to run independent of each other even though it appears that all of them are running at the same time but in reality go's runtime scheduler takes care of scheduling them to share cpu time however if you have multiple cpus they can run in parallel we'll talk more about them in coming lectures for now just know that unlike operating system threads you can spawn millions of go routines without running into any memory problems go channels are used to communicate between go routines think of a tunnel you go in from one end and come out of the another channel behaves in a similar way you send values to it and receive values from it for example go routine 1 sends data over channel 1 which is received by go routine 2 similarly go routine 2 sends data over channel 2 which is received by go routine 1 they also provide synchronization mechanism between the go routines while using channels keep go's philosophy in mind that we don't communicate by sharing memory instead we share memory by communicating and you can break things if you're not careful enough to understand what it means we'll talk about the same in go channels lecture go supports object oriented programming but in its own way it doesn't have class but uses structs might not be a perfect example but simple enough to give you the basic idea of oops a pet struct here abstracts a real world pet It's nothing but a template or blueprint to describe a pet in your program. It has a state to store data and a behavior also called as methods to perform operations on the data. We have used variables inside pet struct to store its name and type and associated two method cuddle and feed where feed accepts one input both methods doing nothing but printing the associated data. Then we use this template blueprint to create objects also called as instance of the struct pet let us create two objects of type pet that is we instantiate them with right data values for each of them and when we run the two methods we get the following output here we can see that it prints messages with data values associated with that object Go also supports runtime polymorphism via interfaces but more on them later. Go standard library includes vast variety of packages notably a NetSDP 
that comes with a complete HTTP implementation and is very handy when it comes to web development. A testing package to write tests and benchmarks for your code, facilitating test-driven development. And lot others such as encoding, decoding, JSON, network cryptography, or as simple as reading and passing of a CSV file. It has huge collections of packages to get you started. Go has a tool chain that provides a set of tools to run, test, benchmark, build, and maintain your code. For example, GoLint to check if your code follows Go's coding conventions suggested by Go developers. The last one listed here, which is clean syntax and a simple and easy to understand code. Not only making it a good choice for beginners, but also for experienced developers who can write code which is easier to understand and maintain. Here is the list of keywords you'll use to write your Go programs. Isn't that short enough? Here is the summary of all features that we have discussed so far. To give you an idea about its usage, here is the list of some popular open source software, complete or part of it written in Go. Go can be used to create wide range of softwares, including web applications, databases, job tools, or distributed blockchain applications. Finally, before moving ahead, I would want you to have a look at these additional tools, not mandatory. I hope you are excited as I am and will have also have fun learning this language. There are lots of things to explore. See you in the next lecture. Thank you.